Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 435, written by Ahedrich62985. Missing items? Old news. Now we have missing organs. When my husband and I found out I was pregnant with baby number two, we were surprised but overjoyed. It had taken us a while and lots of scans to get pregnant with number one, so not needing the intervention with two was relieving. We did, however, decide that number two would be our only other child, so I opted for a c-section to get my tubes tied as well. The pregnancy was normal, I had normal scans, everything went great. At 37 weeks I went into labor and was taken for my c-section. My beautiful baby girl arrived and the doctor went to tie my tubes. However, there was only one fallopian tube. When did you have surgery to remove your right fallopian tube? He asked. Never, I replied. Even scans during this pregnancy showed both of my fallopian tubes intact. Miss, your right fallopian tube was surgically removed. There is scar tissue and everything from a clear surgical procedure. My doctor was baffled. He searched through all of my medical records and could not find a reason for my fallopian tube to be gone. I did not have any surgery between that scan and the c-section, so there was legitimately no reason for it to not be there. He insisted it was clearly a past medical procedure due to the nature of the scar tissue, but could not explain how or when. Needless to say, only one tube ended up tied because the other one had been clearly removed. To this day, it gives me the chills. I truly have no explanation for it. Case Notes, file number 435. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't believe this was a disappearing object phenomena, even though technically, any matter, organic or not, should be fair game for that effect to occur on. I wouldn't discount DOP as a possibility, but the fact your doctor kept referring to highly specific and distinctive scar tissue makes me think of only two possibilities. So the mundane possibility, during the brief gap during your last scan and giving birth to your little girl, you were somehow drugged, abducted by some kind of cartel that surgically harvested your fallopian tube, but only one, then put you right back where you were before they abducted you with no one the wiser, including yourself. Also note that any drug that would cause you to lose consciousness would have heavy lingering effects unlike the movies would show. In fact, the people responsible for putting you under, an anesthesiologist, they're highly paid because it's a dangerous practice and not at all as easy as the movies would have you believe. Or let's bring out the aliens, baby. <laughs> Seriously though, it's the only clear explanation in my mind. Presumably aliens would still require tools and surgery to remove matter from a human body, without killing them at least, and then scar tissue would form, no matter how sharp or precise an instrument is. Only an alien abduction could be done so cleanly in the limited time with no one noticing, not even yourself. I wouldn't be too scared though, I don't think they'd be coming back. If this is in fact what happened, they already took what they wanted, but why on earth would they want a human fallopian too? Are these aliens trying to create a human hybrid? Ooh, this is getting very weird. Bonus file, written by Anonymous. A flash, then a pool of floating milk. I don't know if this was paranormal, I tend to think that it was because there's no explanation for it that I can think of, but anyway, here goes. By the way, I never told this to anyone because I think that people would think we are insane, I still think that you guys probably still will, but it's something extra weird, to me at least, and should be told, so be it. This was in the late 2000s. I don't remember exactly the year and it happened to my then wife and myself in our home. We lived in a nice quiet area, our home was at the end of a road. In front of our house there was obviously a road. On each side we had neighbors whose homes were anywhere from 50 to 100 feet away. On the back of the house it was woods for miles and miles. We used to love seeing all the wildlife that would enter our property at one time or another. But as I said, the biggest plus was how peaceful it was. It was winter time in southern Massachusetts, a cloudy night but no storms and it was around 11.30 at night. We were in our living room just watching some movies. I was relaxing on an easy chair, lazy boy style. 
My wife was sitting on a small couch about six feet from me. There was no noise but for the movie going on, and all of a sudden there was a flash. Everything went all white for a tiny fraction of a second, like all you could see was just the color white. And when that was over, really quickly as you may imagine, something was very different. You see, that room was a really huge addition that the house's previous owners had done I guess sometime in the 90s. They built that and a sizable deck outside. The room was very large and had cathedral ceilings which at its top must easily have reached 15 feet. This is a guess, I don't know for sure, it looked like it would go up forever. On the ceiling, there were a bunch of small lights and a skylight. Being nighttime, the skylight looked like a black square and the lights were providing great illumination. Courtesy of a dimmer, the lights were just right, not too strong, not too weak. Well, right after that flash had gone, I looked up at the ceiling and what I saw froze me in place. Gone were the lights, gone was the square skylight that was dark because it was night. Starting from about 7 feet up from the floor, yes, we had stood up and could easily have touched it, there was what looked like an inverted, as an upside down, pool of what looked like, for the lack of better words, milk. But it had a strange glow to itself. I watched fascinated as this white stuff rippled gently with small waves like it really was a thick liquid. My mind was horrified and curious at the same time because I couldn't think of any phenomenon that could have caused what I'm seeing. A pool of glowing milk, lazily rippling, suspended above our heads. I immediately thought that I must have imagined that and to get confirmation that I wasn't having some medical emergency that made me see things. I looked at my wife who was on the couch. She was staring up at the same thing, with her mouth open. All of a sudden, in another flash and in the blink of an eye, that pool of white stuff wasn't there any longer. It had lasted maybe 10 seconds and everything had gone back to normal. My wife turned to look at me wild eyed and I said, did you just see that? And she said, yes. I asked her what she thought it was and she said she had no idea. I dabbled with the idea that this was somehow some odd lightning thing, but there wasn't any storm and I'm not aware of any natural phenomenon with these characteristics. Nothing was damaged, in that room there was a good deal of electronics, and what we saw looked damn solid. As I said, the consistency and look of regular milk. I remember thinking that the ripples and waves I was seeing in that stuff were something that had they hit your body, you'd have really felt them. It felt like whatever this was, it had substance. In any case, this really spooked me big time. Case Notes, Bonus File Okay, so not very much to say on this, besides that it's an absolutely fascinating read, and a glitch unlike any I've ever read before. All I can say is that the one thing that pops into my head when reading this is fluidic space in Star Trek Voyager. There's this other species that's in another dimension, not a parallel universe, but another dimension, a layer above, and in their universe, the very space itself has a fluidity to it, there is mass in it. So it's almost like you had a perception of a higher level dimension, where in it, you could visualize and see there's this milky white essence to the very nature of space time itself in this dimension. I don't know if that's at all what happened. But that is what my mind was going to when I read this. Truly fascinating. Bonus file, written by Raspberry Waterfall. Santa Claus paying a visit. Maybe evil Santa. When I was eight or nine, I saw something weird on Christmas Eve. This was many, many years ago, but I still remember it like it was yesterday. I still believed in Santa Claus then as a good amount of children do, and I had the usual anxiety and excitement for Santa to leave Christmas presents under the tree. After I went to bed, I had some trouble going to sleep with holiday nerves and such. I had finally drifted off, when I woke up to the sound of soft footsteps somewhere in my room. I automatically assumed it was Santa Claus and I was scared to see him for fear that he might leave or his magic would fail. I opened one eye just barely and saw this black figure standing over my bed staring at me. It was tall, probably around 6 feet tall, and it was completely dark. In a way, it looked almost blacker than even black itself could describe. 
I couldn't see any eyes, a mouth, or a nose on it, but I could clearly see the outline of a head, arms, body, and legs. It looked like a bigger person, so thinking it was Santa just made sense. It stayed in one spot for 10, maybe 15 seconds, until it took a few steps closer. It leaned in a little more, still a few feet away from me, and then stayed there for 10 to 15 seconds more. Even though I couldn't see a face, I knew it was looking right at me. It's just that weird feeling you get when you know you're being watched or looked at. I closed my eyes again and waited for a few minutes. When I looked back, it was gone. I lived in a pretty old house at the time, so the doors and floorboards were squeaky and loud. I heard footsteps, but I never heard the door open. I never saw this figure again, though I've had some other spooky experiences in this house. I asked my mom if she heard Santa when he came into my room last night, and she looked confused for a second. Then she played along and just assumed I was lying, or that my imagination was on hyperdrive. I know this wasn't a person, and I know this wasn't a dream. I also know that spirits and entities are often attracted to lots of excitement and energy, so Christmas would be a perfect time for a ghost to pass through. 